Okay, guys, I think we're just about ready to get started here. Um, as always, appreciate you being here. I um, know it's, it's pretty rainy and yucky outside, so thanks so much for taking time out of your Tuesday to enjoy our ninth episode of Line Change with Coach Thomas. Um, our guest uh, this weekend, uh, or sorry, today, it's not the weekend, <laughs> are uh, Kevin Atma and Jake Fayel. Let's give a round of applause for these two. Uh, we're going to get to these two in just a second. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is ask Coach Thomas a few questions um, about the previous weekend. Uh, we'll get to those guys after that, and then we'll open up the floor for discussion. Um, you guys are free to ask any question your heart desires. That's uh, that by far been my favorite part of the show so far. And then the last thing we'll do is sort of preview the uh, upcoming postseason weekend we have coming up against Knoxville. Um, Coach, we had a, a hard-fought series in Peoria this past weekend. Um, we couldn't snag the home ice advantage we were after in the first round of the playoffs, but I thought the team competed really hard. Um, last games of the regular season, did you feel the, the games uh, Friday and Saturday night could have uh, gone either way? Yeah, I know, definitely. It was um, definitely a playoff atmosphere. Uh, I thought the team played, played really well. Uh, the first game, it was a six-minute lapse. That kind of killed us. I thought we played well. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we hold them to seven shots in the first period. And, um, come out and let a goal in the first, I think, 30 seconds or so in the second. And kind of just couldn't grasp it and just let them get back in the game. And uh, had, had a lapse, like I said, in that six minutes. And um, after that, I thought we played well for the rest of that game also. And um, again, it was a hard fought. These guys never gave up the whole weekend. So um, that, that was a positive, positive thing to go on. Yeah, and the Saturday night tilt reminded me a lot of the, the final game of the series we had against Peoria earlier this season back in February. You guys got off to an early 2 to nothing lead, um, got off to a great start, and you did so without one of your key pieces, Stathis Sumalitis, who's uh, you know, been dealing with a, a minor lower body injury. Can you fill us in a little bit more on his status and what his uh, likelihood is to return this weekend? Yeah, um, it's, he's dealing with a sore hip right now, so um, he wasn't on the ice today. Uh, it's just something we're trying to get, you know, get the treatment and get, do everything we can to get him back for the weekend. So it's kind of a day by day to day thing right now. And um, we'll see if, you know, it gets a little better here in the next couple of days. But I'll give him the time that he needs off um, for sure just to, you know, get him going a bit. He's moving a little slowly still. So um, we'll kind of see in the next couple of days how that goes. Yeah, I mean, we saw just the impact that he made when he returned from the ECHL, and uh, uh, we definitely can't have, uh, can't wait to have him back in the fold. You guys competed the way as as well as you did on Saturday without him. Um, imagine that uh, with him being in the lineup would have made the the game even closer. Um, so, Coach, the regular season's now over. Uh, last game was Saturday, like we said. Over the course of the past uh, six months or so since the campaign began, what have been some of the areas in which the team has grown the most? Um, I think just having those, uh, a lot of young guys, watching them, you know, in their first or second years as being a pro, just kind of how they developed throughout the year. Um, you know, they're going to make mistakes. They made all those mistakes, and um, I think they're not making as many as they did, obviously, earlier in the season. So just watching those guys kind of grow and um, dealing with the ad adversity that we dealt with, and um, yeah, pretty much it, too. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, a lot of players who were here maybe four to six games last season who just sort of uh, came in really late and uh, either didn't make the playoff roster or did but didn't get as much ice time as they have this season. And it's been great to see them flourish in their first full professional campaign. Uh, Kevin, this next question I'm going to address to you. On Saturday, I'm not sure if you even realized this or not, but you actually got an assist. You got on the score sheet. And I don't think any uh, – Jordan Ruby's in the house. He might be able to attest to this or not. But I don't think we've had a goaltender get an assist all season. Did you know – did you realize when Sutliff scored that, that that puck came off your stick a couple of passes ago? No, actually. Uh, Ortiz mentioned it in the room that I might have got one, and I tried to think back to the play. <laughs> and to be honest, I still haven't even – kind of pinpointed when I even touched the puck there or whenever, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's never the worst thing to be on the score sheet, even as a goalie, so yeah, I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, I had Mike Smith on my fantasy team, and he scored a goal, and I didn't get any points for it, and I was really upset. Oh, but, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's too bad. But uh, So, Kevin, I'm told that uh, when you finished up your playing career up at uh, Adrian College, the first coach you reached out to 
um, was Leo. Um, can you explain why that was? Uh, yeah, like I've heard great things. Uh, one of my assi past assistant coaches played here. Uh, my goalie coach actually used to play against Leo back in the day. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But uh, yeah, I've heard great things. Uh, I was excited to get down here and just have the opportunity to play some games uh, at this level. And I knew coming down here, Leo made it sound like I was going to get that opportunity. And I have been, or I have had it so far, and I've been happy with how it's gone. And I don't know, uh, no complaints so far. <laughs> so, uh, Jake, sort of piggybacking off of that, um, you've been back in Macon for about four weeks now since you returned from Greenville in the ECHL. Uh, how have you liked playing for Leo again as opposed to playing for Kevin Kerr up in uh, Greenville? <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's so much better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> No, I mean, careful. What are you going to say? Two completely different coaching styles, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kevin's a little bit more uh, in your face. There's uh, times when you're on the bench where you really just want him to leave you alone and kind of hide away from him. Mm -hmm. But uh, Leo's a player's coach, man. And I mean, uh, it goes back to even this summer. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, Leo never pressured me into anything. Just call me, see how I was doing. You know, really cares about his players, and uh, I think it speaks a lot for him. So, I mean, it's just been pretty damn good, pretty damn good. So, Jake, you played uh, six games here for the Mayhem in the in the postseason last year. Um, I'm sure you probably remember the the feeling in the locker room uh, amongst your teammates. Is that uh, is that feeling sort of coming back? Do you, does it have a similar vibe um, this season as it did last year? Yeah, I think so. Uh, when the uh, selection show was going on you know last year we uh all went to margaritas they had like a big selection show party for us mm -hmm. uh we didn't have that this year but literally every single player on the team was together watching that show hanging out all day and when we saw the selections uh, the whole room erupted you know we were so <laughs> excited we couldn't wait to get back on the ice guys were asking are we going to practice tomorrow is it optional what's going on what's going on so i think that uh excitement is back and uh, i think we're going to do really good it was an optional, wasn't it, yesterday? Or yeah, was today, no, yeah, today we had practice, but right. yesterday was... So how many how many guys took the optional on Monday? I think there's a bunch, uh, six maybe, six <laughs> yeah. or seven. Maybe. Okay, yeah. Kevin was uh, out there. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys, uh, last question. All of you are welcome to answer, and I have to ask this. Is there anybody on the team who's got a more intimidating game face than Jake Fiella? <laughs> have you guys seen it? If you haven't seen it, it's on Mayhem social media. Feel free to check it out. <laughs> I'll have to look at it. I don't think I've seen it. Did so. you see it, Jake? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'll, in the zone, man. You know. I'll, I'm pulling it up right now for, just for you, Coach. Right. I don't know. I think Stath has just got a pretty good grimace, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Stath, as you said? Yeah, I think Sumi's got me. Okay, well. Got to snap a couple of pictures of him. Yeah, maybe we'll do We might do a poll on Twitter later, so uh, look out for that. But uh, all right, folks, well, that's all the questions I have. Um, the next segment of the show is going to belong to you guys. Um, feel free to ask any question, uh, voice any comment, concern, complaint that you wish. Um, the only thing that we ask is that you please do so into the uh, microphone here. We've got a mic that we'll pass around and uh, just so that we can get it all recorded for our, uh, our live or our archive version on YouTube. So. No, it should be good. And Brian untangled it. Thank you, Brian. Sort of. Maybe not. Uh, so both of you guys are products of the college hockey system. Uh, so when you were students, what was your major and what drove you to uh, study that? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I was a criminology major, actually. You know, uh, growing up, I always uh, loved the military, loved law enforcement, and I uh, always wanted to get into something like that. Ended up going to school a little later than normal for uh, juniors, so, you know, military was kind of a little out of that since I graduated at 25. And uh, so now I'm trying to pursue a uh, career in federal law enforcement, whether that be uh, Secret Service, U.S. Marshals. So. Yeah, and me, uh, I took business management. Uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to take going in. 
Uh, I wanted to take something pretty general that I could pretty much use uh, for anything. And I was thinking about the sciences for a bit and that wasn't really the route for me. So I tried to just keep it pretty general with business management. Okay, this one's for Coach. Um, with Kletcha and Silvez scrapped from the uh, lineup for the playoffs, uh, what role do you have them playing uh, during practice and things like that? Um, well, Silvis is on his way home. Um, Kletcha, his ankle just wasn't healing the way it, it should have. It was kind of bothering him a lot in Peoria, so that's the reason why he didn't make that playoff roster. But... Um, we got to get him healthy first, so I'm just going to keep him off the ice. Um, but as soon as he can skate, I will definitely, I mean, have him on the ice. He's still a part of this team. He's still going to be coming on the road trip with us and, and stuff like that. So he's a part of the meetings that we have. And um, I let him know that, that he's still a huge part of this team, even though he's not on this roster. And, uh, we just got to get him healthy. Well, speaking of uh, Silvez, um, this one's actually for Kevin. Obviously, it's disappointing for you not to have uh, Silvez with you to start with the playoffs, but having Jordan Ruby is a pretty good consolation. So what are your current thoughts on the situation and having a highly touted veteran starting with you in goal? Yeah, uh, I mentioned the Roots today. Like, uh, I haven't really had an older goalie partner for a very long time, so I'm just taking this opportunity to really learn as much as I can. And like a proven professional goalie like he is, uh, it's a great, great experience for me. Like I've, I've had my opportunities to play some games and um, obviously he's going to have some opportunities to play here throughout the playoffs. And I'm just learning or willing to learn from him, see what he does in practice and games and take it day by day. <laughs> uh, this one's for Leo. With our, our recent road, road woes the last part of the season, what adjustments are you going to make going into these road games in the playoffs? Um, so I didn't hear the first part. I'm sorry. With, with the woes we've had on the road the last part of the season, what adjustments are you making? Um... I don't know, just the, we're playing Knoxville, so we gotta yeah. kind of just, we've played them the last few times here in the last few weeks, so we kind of know what they're about. And, um, you know, playoffs, it's a, it's a new season. We can't go off of regular season road games and stuff. You know, last year we were pretty good on the road too, or we were a little better than this year, but um, I think the guys have played in Knoxville enough to know the building and stuff like that, so. We're kind of just going to be working on stuff, knowing that things happen way quicker in Knoxville. It's a smaller rink, and and just prepare ourselves that way. So you know the question I'm going to ask, right? <laughs> you good, so Leo? So. Uh, Suspended for a game. I mean, how do we how do we play that one now? Yeah, how, how did it happen? You ask well, well, that, and how do we play it from here? So, <laughs> how do we play? Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm still allowed to be there and stuff. Um, I just can't be on the bench. I'm really not going to go into the full details of what happened, but it was something that I asked the ref, or we talked about after the first period. And it continued to happen throughout the whole game. And he wasn't doing anything about it. And then um, I think in the last four or five minutes of that game, I'm watching one of my players get sucker punched about five, six times in the face. So I didn't have any nice words to say to him after that. And kind of did something else, and that was it. So um, I, I deserve the decision. That's fine. Um, Probably could have handled it a little better, but my emotions got the best of me. And um, I mean, that I just 
showing my players that I care about them. So uh, that was about it. But I got one game. That's fine. I'll travel with the team and stuff like that. So. So uh, I had uh, the interesting experience of watching an old hockey game from like the 60s. And one of the things that stood out to me the most was the equipment size for goalies. And Kevin, being that you are a goalie, my, my question is for you is, uh, a lot has been made this season about like goaltending equipment size and should they shrink it down more or is it keeping goaltenders safe? And what, what are your thoughts on you know, equipment size for goalies, and should it be smaller, or is it necessary that they're that size? Uh, well, well, first of all, I think uh, the first, like, the most important thing is obviously the protection of the goalies. Like, those shots are coming in pretty quick, and they have to be durable as well. Like, they can't just stop the puck once, and then the next time you get hit in that spot, and then it's, it's giving you bruises all over your body. But uh, for the NHL and other pro leagues that are doing these goalie sizing restrictions, like uh, it does kind of, uh, it kind of magnifies goalie skill a little more in that, in that sense. Like it makes them have to react more, makes them have to move more and play less of a blocking style. And me being only six foot flat, like uh, I think that's almost beneficial to me. And, and you're starting to see it more in the, in the NHL and whatnot, that there's shorter goalies coming up and in the pro ranks as well. So um, I think they have to manage, manage it well and still keep like the protection factor and uh, like the most important factor for sure. I would like them to be smaller because I want more goals <laughs> and I don't score much. So that's my take. Uh, Kevin, coach mentioned the change in the rink size going up to Knoxville, smaller barn. Um, I'm sure you've played in all sorts of rink sizes uh, going through college. Um, do you sort of have a preference as a goaltender as to what size the dimensions of the rink? Mm -hmm. oh. uh, to be honest, not really. There's, there's a little bit of a difference. Obviously, on the bigger sheets of ice, you have more time to get set and push over. And I challenge a little more than probably the normal goalie uh, because of my size. So. I would say if I have a preference, it would be uh, bigger ice, uh, but still like the smaller ice in Knoxville when we played there the other weekend. Uh, I played in a small rink like that throughout juniors for three years and in college. There's all sorts of different sizes that you'll come across for rinks. Uh, so like, I don't know, um, you find your angles in the morning skate there. Uh, and it. it I don't know, when, once the puck's dropped, it's all kind of the same. You just kind of get in the zone and try to get hit as much as possible by it, so. All right, this one's for both Alex and Coach. Uh, how big of a factor do you think that signing Ruby made in, Pe in uh, neither Peoria, Huntsville, or Birmingham picking you guys in the challenge round? All right, I got this first. Obviously, <laughs> getting Ruby back's huge. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to bug him throughout the season. I, I want, obviously, I want the best for him and his family. And um, if that was staying up and, and wheeling the whole time, I, I was all for it. So I didn't really try to call him all the time to bug him to say, hey, please come back to Macon and stuff like that. So uh, I just kind of kept my eyes open on how they were doing down there and if they were going to make playoffs or not. Um, kind of just happened in Peoria. Um, that I got the call or I looked and seen that they weren't going to make playoffs and um, talked to the coach up there in Wheeling and um, just happy to have him back. Obviously, he's a huge part. He's won a championship here and anytime you can have two number one goalies is, is huge for your, for your club in playoffs. So we're definitely glad to have both goaltenders there for sure. Yeah, it was enormous. I mean, we, we all saw what he could do at the start of the season when he was playing uh, for us early on. And, um, you know, we sort of developed this culture as a team that was really, really hard to score goals against. And he was a huge part of the reason why um, his numbers um, tell the whole story, I think, with uh, how, how well he's done keeping the puck out of our net. And, you know, we all know what he can do. And um, then I, I happen to know that it did play a huge factor in those other teams not wanting to pick us. <laughs> uh, 
I know we got picked by Knoxville, who was really by default since yeah. Knoxville was in fourth place. But if you'd have had your preference, if we were in first place, who would you rather have played? If we were in first? Yeah, if you had the first pick. That's a good question. Um, so I couldn't pick Knoxville, right, because they were fourth? Um, it's a good question. It probably would have been Fayetteville or Roanoke, maybe. I probably would have picked Fayetteville, I think, if, if we were in first. But again, I don't know. That's something I would have sat with Ryan and my captains and stuff and kind of talked over it like like we did last year. But um, off the top, I would say favor, maybe. All right, guys, anything else? So out of those top four teams that did pick, who do you think would be the toughest matchup for us right now? Out of the top four? Out of those top four. The toughest matchup. Um, well, obviously, Peoria is probably up there. But we play well against them. Um, I would say those guys, though. Peoria is just a team that's built. They've been built for years now kind of thing. They have that, that tough core and, you know, good goaltending also. So that's a team that I, that's probably the top. Top one of the top fours for sure. That uh, Jake, uh, I asked Sumi this a couple of weeks ago, but uh, how has your game improved since you returned from the uh, ECHL? And how's that? How has that experience helped you over the past couple of weeks? Uh, you know, in the uh, ECHL, it's just a little bit faster with everything. Uh, guys are a little bit bigger, take a couple more hits, so you learn how to uh, protect yourself a little bit more, how to uh, I've actually just not take the hits. Um, so I think that's helped me out, you know, coming back here. It's still high level of skill. As you can see, a lot of guys are coming back down from the ECHL. So, I mean, the talent level is right up there. But uh, I think just the poise with the puck, uh, it's, it really helped me grow, you know, going against those high caliber players. <laughs> I think Ruby's kids have some questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is only relevant if you guys watch the show Game of Thrones, but considering it's about to start, which house do you all belong to? <laughs> Oof, wow. <sighs> I don't watch Game of Thrones, I'm sorry. Oh, I, no. I, don't, I don't have the money for the uh, HBO <laughs> or Showtime, whatever it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, come on, help me out here. Uh, I've never watched it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this is sad. I'm, I'm all alone up here. Uh, House Stark, all the way. Hmm. Proof. Oh wow! <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> and a hockey-related one. Um, what, if any, sort of pregame ritual do you have? Um, getting ready for the games, especially going into playoffs here? Pre-game ritual for me, honestly, um, I used to be pretty crazy with it. Back in juniors, I would show up to the uh, rink probably about five hours before. Yeah, and uh, I'd sit in the stands by myself and, you know, picture every single thing that I thought was going to happen on the ice. And uh, I had probably my worst game of my career was out there for seven goals the next game. I came in exactly when I had to, nothing earlier, did anything else, didn't eat a ran ate a random pregame meal, and then uh, had two goals and three assists. So now I just keep it to whatever I feel like that day. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Wow. Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty similar. Like uh, Goalies, obviously, I've come across quite a few uh, pretty structured goalies across the days and it, it made me pick up uh, some superstitions and whatnot but uh, in the past probably four years when I've been at college I've realized that it's more just a mindset going in like uh, of course I have things uh, not really superstitious I'd say that I like to do before a game like stretch uh, roll out my muscles uh, kick the soccer ball around but um, I think it's more of actual like the mental thought going into it being confident and uh, just going out there and wanting to play, I think, is a, a big part of it as well. <laughs> uh, 
Who was that look for? I just miss you, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are the chances of uh, the bozo ref that you had it with showing up here for some real making mayhem abuse from What's uh, that? I couldn't the hear fans? That. What's the fr- I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. What's the chances of the ref that you had your uh, yeah. altercation with showing up here to get some um, Make It Mayhem fan abuse? He will, he will be here Saturday night for the game. <laughs> what's, what's his number? Uh, I, don't, I can't remember his number. I, I had a talk with him already. I mean, we've, you know, once all that happened, I gave him a call the next day. We talked. You know, I said what I had to say, apologized to him, and kind of just buried it. So, oh. But yeah, he'll be here Saturday night. He's rough in our game. All right, guys, any other questions? We still haven't heard that patented NHL quest, NHL 19 oh, question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is a trademark question. Everyone has to answer. All right. Uh, so you guys are familiar with the EA Sports NHL hockey games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what would you say, uh, if you were in the game, what would your highest uh, uh, rated attribute be and what would your lowest one be? Uh, actually, my buddy updated the game when I was in Greenville. I was in the game, and I was the lowest scored player on the team. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, shot blocking 99. Uh, anything past the red line, probably about a two or three. <laughs> I, I would hope that shot blocking would be up there for me too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So what was your rating, Jake? You said it was the lowest on the team. Actually, it was second lowest. I think it was a second. 61 okay. overall. I mean, that's higher than I would be. Pro- projected uh, AHL top two line. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. Really? Oh, yeah, it does that little projected, yeah. like, yeah. Fine. Cool. Thanks, John. I really wanted to hear that one. Well, speaking of NHL, um, the playoffs start this Wednesday. Who do you guys have as the Western Conference champion and the Eastern Conference champion? I'll take this first. Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> Eastern Conference champs. And I will go with uh, San Jose in the West. Yeah, I'm going to stick to the roots, too, with uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs out of the East. And, uh, oh, no, I think Vegas might have a low run again. Love the Sharks, so I want them out of the West. Love Brent Burns. Uh, you know, I think Columbus is going to shock the world. And, uh, <laughs> nah, they're losing in three. Uh, Tampa's going to go all the way. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'll say Tampa, Winnipeg. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> they're not in it, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. No, they, they were killing me this year. All right, guys, well, I really appreciate your questions. Um, We're going to move on to the last part of the show here. Uh, We're just going to sort of preview the upcoming weekend we have. Again, it's our uh, first playoff game coming up. We're on the road on Friday uh, in Knoxville. Um, Things worked out well for us the last time we were there, so we're hoping we can have a performance like that again. Um, So Friday night, uh, I know there's a lot of folks planning on making the trip. I think it's about four and a half, five hours up to Knoxville, which isn't too bad. Uh, And then the following night, Saturday night, we'll be back home. Uh, at the Macon Centerplex. Tickets are available now. They've gone on sale. Uh, if you're a season ticket holder and you got the early bird special, um, your tickets have all been printed and can be picked up at any point from now until the end of the week, uh, either at our office or at the box office. Um, you can uh, always call the Mayhem uh, office for uh, more information, 478-803-1592, or you can just visit our website uh, and get them through Ticketmaster. Um, Coach, the last question I have for you um, what is different, most of all, about uh, playoff hockey compared to the regular season? Oh, well, just <laughs> overall compete level, you know. A lot of the times during the regular season, you get away with a lot of those small things. You can cheat, um, you know, cheat on back checks. You can 
cheat by not getting pucks in deep behind, you know, the defensemen and stuff like that. But in playoffs, those things kind of kill you. And it's a, it's a grind, you know. Everybody's, you got to honestly try to win every shift out there and battle and win your battles. And, um, you know, in my, in my career, I was a part of both winning and losing championships. So, um, you know, the way I lost, lost it for our team was kind of, um, me not, or sorry, me taking my eye off my player for like half a second and it ends oh. up in our net, mm. you know, series over and I'm watching the other team celebrate. So it's just kind of just keeping uh, attention to detail, uh, working hard every shift and not cheating. You cannot cheat in playoffs because it always comes back to bite you somehow. Yeah. Um, and again, there's bounces too. Uh, like I was telling Jake last year and kind of how, how we got knocked out of playoffs last year. It's Jake's in the right spot, goes off his stick, hits him in the throat. He bends over, obviously, because a puck to the throat doesn't feel well or that good and ends up in our net. So you never, uh, you always want to give it your all. You don't want to come back to the locker room or in between periods and say, oh man, I should have did this different or anything like that. You got to leave it all out on the ice uh, every shift and every period. Yeah, and I'm sure I don't need to explain this to this room here, but uh, there's really nothing like playoff hockey, the intensity, the hostilities, the stakes, uh, everything being on the line. Um, there's really just nothing like it. So uh, we look forward to having you guys um, at our game this Saturday and perhaps even up at our game in Knoxville on Friday. Um, as always, the last question I have is going to be for the audience. Uh, it's going to be a trivia question. Whoever can get the uh, question right will win a free autographed puck from these two gentlemen. The question is this, which current SPHL goaltender was Kevin Etma's backup at Adrian College for three seasons? Do you know this, Sean? Okay. Giving someone else a chance. Uh, Carrie Price. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. No. It would be cool if Carey Price was your goal. It was your backup, eh? Yeah. That'd be neat. <laughs> that on a resume. Not bad at all. <laughs> You're on the right track. <laughs> Somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's hear some guesses, guys. There's only so many goalies in the league. <laughs> no guesses? Yeah, who said it? All right. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well done. All right, let's hear a round of applause. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming out and uh, enjoying our ninth episode of Line Change. We hope you've enjoyed your meals, and we hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.